Okay, traders, what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna break down backtesting performance KPIs, also known as key performance indicators, and essentially make sense of the data, right? The goal of automated trading and backtesting is to find an edge, assess the data, determine if there's things that need to be changed or capitalized on, and sort through the noise, right? So for this example, I'm just going to carry on with uh, the same uh, strategies and the same markets that I used in the backtesting video. But what I did was I actually cut down the time a little bit. I only went back for the current year. At the time of filming this video, this is obviously October 22nd, 2024, current day. And then basically uh, I went back ultimately to the beginning of this year, right? Now I already ran the back test. I already ran it on stocks, uh, crypto, Forex and futures. We've already got about 34 markets on a daily chart, weekly chart, and then on a four hour and then on a 720 minute. And uh, yeah, I ran that back test. And so the goal of this video is to ultimately spend our time in the key, uh, key data points. Uh, and assess the ability for you to read the TickBlaze platform for producing the metrics that you need to assess, okay? Now, the first thing you'll always do is you'll have a strategy section up here, which will allow you to toggle on or off the strategies. The purpose of this is to see all of them uh, as a portfolio, or if you want to see one of them by themselves, right? If I only wanna see the futures markets, I can do that. As I mentioned in the back testing video, if you like to see things side by side, you can always hit the compare button and you can ultimately do this and you can ultimately bring that side by side. And then you could literally compare, let's say uh, two markets against one market, right? If I wanted to see what was the performance of uh, stocks and crypto versus futures, right? You can see that they're pretty neck and neck. You know, if I wanted to take a look at stocks, against the futures markets, I could do that. This is a part of looking at comparing portfolios or comparing side-by-side -side analysis. If you want to do a side-by-side -side analysis, you can, or you can literally do them all simultaneously. It really is your privilege. This is one of the benefits of having TickBlaze uh, and what it's designed to do. Um, for the most part, uh, a lot of traders will start with the portfolio view. And then they'll really start diving into comparing, okay, strategy versus strategy in a side-by-side -side narrative. Now, I'll go back to a side-by-side -side narrative in a bit, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to just spend some time going over the metrics, okay? So the main summary tab here is designed for you to uh, look at all of your data, right? And for this, it doesn't matter if I'm looking at one strategy or if I'm looking at four simultaneously, it's all going to do the same thing. It's going to depict the trade data based off the strategies, and then we need to make sense of the data, okay? So the summary section is the main starting point. You've got your starting and end point, your starting equity balance. The reason it's set to 400 here is because each strategy had 100,000 starting cash balance, which means together that's a $400,000 total. And the ending equity combined with all these strategies was the end result, right? And the net profit was here. Um, you can see the net profit percentage. You can look at the gross profit, and then the gross loss, and then your CAGR, and then your max drawdown is here, and then your max drawdown percentage, okay? Now, down below, if you scroll down a little bit, you're gonna see the overall metrics. This is what a lot of people tend to gravitate to. You're gonna see your expectancy per trade. You're gonna look at your luck coefficient, your payoff ratio. You're gonna see your profit factor. A lot of people look at profit factor. It's the relationship to net profit versus drawdown. Uh, your exposure, your recovery factor, right? And uh, your risk adjusted returns, your sharp ratio, your Certina ratios, your ulcer index, your Van Tharp. Uh, we actually have a Van Tharp SQN, so that's, that's unique to us and having that in here. And then ultimately your win loss ratio, right? For the entire portfolio. You have the ability to create custom metrics. So if you wanted to create your own window, you have the ability to come in here and let's say you wanted to create a p l report or a cumulative profit report. You could literally create an entire window of what you like to look at, and then ultimately you can then see it in here. You can also export your results to an Excel file, which is very valuable as well for you, those of you that do data mining, right? And uh, in here, you can see the all positions window, your winning percentage and all the metrics. I don't have any commissions set in here. And the reason for that Okay, the reason I don't have any commission set is I didn't set the commissions in the previous strategy. When you're building your strategies, 
Okay, in here, it's going to ask you for a commission script. Since I didn't put one in, it's not going to show me commissions, right? So just keep in mind that if you wanna see commissions, you have to add that at the strategy level, okay? Then you've got all your winning trades and your losing trades and uh, uh, you can assess the data, okay? Now up here, you're gonna see that there's the ability to look at all symbols or you can ultimately look at the custom symbols. You're gonna see here, these are all the symbols that are in all the strategies. So, you know, depending on how you choose to look at it, uh, you can set this in a different denomination of currency balance, depending on your country of residence. And then you can look at the start and end time, okay? There is the ability to do Monte Carlo simulations, which we could run a Monte Carlo simulation, right? And if I wanna run that, right, it can give me a Monte Carlo simulation, which is basically a, 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 a simulation of running a thousand different variations of the same reports to tell you what it's likely to produce. And uh, we're not gonna get into Monte Carlo today. I'll do some extra videos on forward testing and Monte Carlo simulations, but it has the ability to actually break this down into a pretty comprehensive framework, okay? Now, we're gonna start here at the bottom and we're gonna work our way through the periodicities and all the KPIs. The period breakdown is really good uh, if you are somebody that wants to look at a more granular level. Since this is an entire test for this year, then clearly I'm not gonna have more than one year, right? But since I'm doing one year, I could break it down by day of week. I could break it down by hour of day. I could break it down by monthly or weekly. And uh, let's just say day of week. A lot of traders like to look at day of week. And you know, it's pretty interesting that the entire portfolio performs quite well, except for Saturdays. And ironically, that's only the crypto market, clearly, because everything else is closed on a Saturday, right? Uh, but for the most part, Monday's the biggest day, right? Monday performs the best over this year, which is good to know, right? Like, if you know that on average, right, your worst day is Tuesdays, you know, maybe it's to do with fundamental news. Maybe it's to do with information that you want to assess differently. Maybe you want to deploy your strategies differently on Tuesdays than you do on the rest of the week. Maybe you want to increase size on the most profitable days historically and then scale back, right? These are valuable data points. Another thing that you can see here is that we've pre-populated these columns based off what we think most people look at. Uh, you can ultimately come in here and edit the columns. You can also change the look and feel of your graphs. Uh, under your settings parameters, you can change the background, the foreground. You can see the columns that are pre-configured here and uh, you can actually set the colors. Maybe you wanna look at orange and purple or pink and blue, right? Whatever, whatever uh, you see fit, okay? And uh, ultimately the next thing you could do is you could break it down to maybe you wanna see hour of day, right? Like in the day, like where is your most profitable times? And uh, you can see let's sort by profit right 11 these are the most profitable times and uh, you can see that uh, most of your money here was made in the evening right in this section here and then a lot of it was made in the mornings right and then in the pre-market right and so this is really really important data to assess depending on if you're looking at swing trading strategies or day trading strategies okay so the next thing we can do is we can look at symbol breakdown and uh, this is actually unique because if you're trading multiple asset classes or multiple strategies, you can actually see where the lion's share of your profit was made just at a quick viewpoint. I can see that even though I was looking at a lot of different markets, most of my money was made in the futures markets, right? It was really scaled in this environment. I did make, you know, some, some there was a lot of trade activity in, for, in Forex, but this has a lot to do with how many trades. It's not so much how much money I made, but how much trades I took and how many positions I took on those asset classes, right? You can see that uh, I took a whole lot more futures trades, which makes sense because the strategy parameters for futures was set to a much faster signal. So we're gonna go in and take a look at that in just a moment, okay? Now you can take a look at winning, losing positions by breakdown. You have the, pos you have the privilege of going through here and sorting through as much of the granularity as you choose uh, and as we do with all tables, you can come in here and you can edit what you choose to see in the breakdown, okay? Now, profit distribution is gonna show you where you make most of your profits, right? And it's gonna tell you where the skew is for profit and positions. When you're MAE, your maximum adverse excursion, right? This is really looking at where your trades are going against you and you can see your biggest drawdown points and assess your drawdowns. Uh, you can basically sort this data as well by uh, different viewpoints. So you have the ability to come in here and take a look at that. 
And for maximum favorable district excursion, this is basically looking at the upside, right? How much money are you making uh, and your targets, right? And what normally gets done with MAE and MFE is you can really see like, are you trading with too big of a stop loss? Are you trading with too small of a stop loss? You'll be able to see uh, how far the trades go against you versus go in your favor. And it's really good for assessing the performance of strategy targets and stop placements, right? And it'll help you assess the overall performance of your uh, trading systems and really about where to place your stops and targets. A lot of times traders will have a, a strategy exit and then they look at their MFE and they say, wow, I could have I could have really taken more out of the market on all of my winning trades, which then gives you the foresight to see into the future and say, OK, maybe I'm going to have a bigger R multiple on my strategy because my MFE tells me to do so. Right. So these are things that you can look at for assessing the analysis on your strategies. Now, graphs is where everybody lives because it's visual. It's where everybody kind of gets a, a psychological depiction of the overall result. Uh, without getting lost in the weeds of the data, right? Visuals are key. Um, one of the things you can do is you can look by weekly data. You can look by monthly data, right? You can look by daily data and uh, you can look at it in a linear or a log scale. Uh, this is where all the magic happens. So if you want to sort through the summary charts, you know, you can go into like a net profit and you can see the net profit here uh, on a daily basis. If I want to switch this over to weekly. I can see that on a weekly basis, which is pretty, pretty visual, right? Like it's pretty nice and it's pretty graphically enhanced for you to be able to see the, the wins versus the losses on uh, your daily basis and your weekly basis, right? If you want to look at your drawdown, you can take a look at the drawdowns and you can see that your, uh, your drawdowns, you know, come up and come down, right? If you want to look at your wins and losses and your, your profit factor ratios, you can do all that in here. And uh, it really can become a very visual and appealing, uh, basically a, a, an objective for you to assess the data. OK, now a couple things here. What I want to do is I want to now switch out of the KPI breakdowns and I want to go into the, the top management of the infrastructure. So um, the workspaces is where you actually see the trades taking place. And the workspaces are really built for a tabbed interface, which allow you to be able to toggle between the different strategies, right? If I'm looking at stocks, if I'm looking at crypto, if I'm looking at Forex, if I'm looking at futures, right? I have that privilege to be able to do that, right? This is the whole point of portfolio level deployment. Maybe I'm managing a fund and I'm, I want to look at, you know, five future strategies, right? Well, I could have five futures tabs here, all trading different strategies, right? If I want to look at, you know, just a stock portfolio and a crypto portfolio, I could do that, right? If you wanted to look at the entire futures markets and have 20 future symbols in here, you could do that, right? There's, you could do that with stocks. You can do that with every asset class. The goal here is that the, the charting infrastructure shows you the executions. You can see the, the sells and the buys and the sells and the buys. And uh, the, the goal here is for you to be able to visually depict your strategy, be able to see the indicators working, be able to see the rules working. And uh, this is where you get to visually see uh, your trades uh, playing out on the charts, right? Now, the next thing that I always like to point out is the strategies overview. Now, this to me is a very important tab because this is the overall snapshot of how your strategies are performing each, right? So you can look at the four, the four strategies here. You see the best one was the FX buying power, but let's look at the profit. So realized PL and uh, the realized PL is that's only 15 grand. And let's go to that. That's the biggest one here, 670, right? And uh, you can change the rounding to these and uh, make it less of a decimal point, but uh, it really is just your preference. You also have the ability to uh, edit the columns, right? You can change how you want to see things and you can add things and take away things, but we've really made the the default layout, what most people are going to be looking at. And uh, you can see here that uh, this is a really good snapshot of the overall portfolio of maybe you're managing an entire basket of markets in a basket of systems, right? Um, the other thing here is positions. This is really important because you're going to assess your open positions, your closed positions, your all positions. Uh, since this was a back test, I'm not going to have any open positions. Uh, all of them are going to close at the end of the back test, okay? And if you want to look at orders, this is where you can look at pending orders, filled orders, canceled orders. As I said, everything allows you to go in and customize everything. So if you want to see things, you want to save them, that's totally fine. And the log files are for you to assess the broker connections and your data connections 
for you to be able to go in and actually assess uh, your uh, your feeds, right? If uh, you ever have an issue with your broker or your data, uh, you'll most, almost see the, the, the disruptive uh, aspect in here. You see where it's connecting and if you go all the way down, I'm not sure if there's anything down here. I don't think there's any, there wasn't any uh, disconnects in my service, so you won't see any red errors. If you see a red error in here, it'll tell you what the error was, you know, broker disconnected or data disconnected. And this is normally going to happen at the broker of the data level. And uh, you just need to restart the platform. Okay. If our support team ever tells you to submit your logs, this is what it's referring to. And you'll be able to find those in the tick plays two folders, which will instruct you if, if ever need be. Okay. And then last but not least, as always, we just go back to the performance metrics and then we can ultimately go back to the, uh, the overall summary. Okay. Now, you know, this is a pretty good overview of KPIs. One of the things that you can ultimately do is you can actually go into the wiki and uh, you can actually learn about these KPIs. So let's go in and find the tools and let's go to uh, actually help and uh, user guide. I'm going to pull up the wiki. So one second as I just grab it over from the other browser. Okay. And inside the documentation, you can click and you can do KPIs. And uh, let's see here. Let's go back. Let me see if we put it under a different search field. So we'll search performance. I think it'll be under performance. Yeah, there it is. So you can see performance summary and what the performance summary does is it breaks down all of the uh, different aspects here. And if I just click on performance summary, you're going to see that it ultimately will give you a, a detailed breakdown of all of the different metrics inside of TickBlaze. So one of the things you can do is you can come back to the main contents, you can find performance summary, and you can basically just study all of the metrics. Should you want to learn about it, right? If you want to actually come in here and what is expectancy, right? What is your profit factor, right? What is your win loss ratio? right? These things. And, uh, this is going to be very important if you're new to data analysis, or if you're new to KPIs, um, you know, we can, uh, you know, we can go through all the different aspects in here, right? If you want to look at period breakdown, you can assess what is the period breakdown, right? If you want to look at the symbol breakdown, like it's going to give you a breakdown and it's going to give you a detailed description of literally everything that is inside of the TickBlaze platform. It's a really big piece of software, which has a lot of metrics that are very, very comprehensive. And for those of you that are actually reading and assessing your data points, you know, if you want to study what the MAE is, right? If you want to study what your MFE is, right? Like these are things that are really important, understanding your graphs, right? Like looking at your performance graph and learning about the different metrics about expectancy and about profit factor and, and all those things that we just discussed. It's going to be a great point for you to study. And I really think this is a great primer for you to get your feet wet in the back testing uh, side of the platform. And if at any given time you have any questions about the performance analysis, or if you have any questions about TickBlaze and the actual KPIs, uh, please let my team and I know, and we'd be more than happy to invite you into a webinar or do a deep dive uh, training session with our product team. Okay. So traders, hopefully you found that informative. The next video is we're going to be breaking down the optimization side of the platform, and we're going to move into optimizations. Take care traders, and we'll see you in the next video.